Hey there, this is your host, Dr. Lori Friesen, and you're listening to episode number 152 of Beginning Teacher Talk. Just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. I'm dedicated to being the mentor for you that I wish I had when I first started teaching. In this podcast, we talk about all of the behind the scenes stuff about teaching you really need to know, but didn't learn when you were in university. And we share the most amazing resources, tips and strategies out there so you can become the teacher you've always dreamed of being. Let's start the show. Well, hey there, teachers, and welcome back to episode number 152 of the Beginning Teacher Talk podcast. It's a beautiful day today here in Naples, Florida. I am loving this choice of getting a condo here and trying to work remotely for at least some of the winter months. This has been a dream of mine for so long, so I'm so excited to be living into that dream. I can see a palm tree outside my window, you guys. This is amazing. For a Canadian, I'm telling you. For those of you who are raised in Florida, you're probably like, no big deal. Like, why is she so excited about this? But I'm telling you, for those of you who are like me, who aren't really a fan of snow anymore, I'm loving this. (laughs) Okay, so today on the podcast, we're going to talk about yet another topic that I really wish they taught us more about in university, and that's how to use your teacher assistant. Oh my gosh. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a teacher assistant inside your classroom, they can be one of your most valuable assets and your most supportive partners if you know what to do to first of all set up that relationship and establish that relationship in a way that allows you to be the leader inside your classroom with their assistance. And if you know what types of things in advance you really want them to do in your classroom that not only validates and empowers them in a way that best uses their skills and talents, but also ensures that you maintain leadership inside your classroom. And just to be clear before we get started and dive in, when I use the term TA inside this episode, I'm talking about an individual who has not been assigned to a specific student, but a teacher assistant who is there in your classroom to literally be an assistant to you and to your students. So when you have a TA who is specifically assigned to an individual student, that's going to look very different than a general TA in your classroom who's there to help with a variety of different things. And even if you only have a TA for a few hours a week, or if you're lucky enough to have one a few hours a day, this is going to be very helpful for you. One of the big challenges that I hear from new teachers is they may be lucky enough to have a teacher assistant or a TA in their classroom, which they're very grateful for. But one of the things that we were not taught in college is how to work with a teacher assistant and essentially become what feels like a boss or a supervisor in some ways, because we've never had to be in charge of or manage somebody else. So if you're anything like I was when I first started teaching, I'm laughing because I remember what a hot mess I was. I felt like a hot mess most of the time myself and just trying to get myself in order and learn how to adult and figure out how to teach, let alone now try to figure out how to be in charge of someone else's schedule and manage their time felt like a level of responsibility that I just wasn't ready for yet. And one of the biggest mistakes I think that I made when I first started teaching was not being super clear about how I wanted my TA to function in my classroom because I just wanted to be nice. I didn't want to seem like I was micromanaging or bossing her around or telling her what to do because that was not comfortable for me, managing someone else's time. It wasn't familiar to me. I'd never done it before. And even though I was okay with managing my students' time, it just felt really uncomfortable for me to manage another adult's time, mostly because I'd never done it before. I already had enough on my plate and I didn't want to think about now how to manage her time. Also, when I had my first TA, like a lot of the parents of my students, she, my TA, was a lot older than I was, and she had a lot more classroom experience than I did, not as a teacher, but as a TA in other classrooms. So in some ways, she was really intimidating to me. I felt like she was constantly there judging me when I messed up. I don't even know if that was true, but she kind of would stifle little giggles, and I know she meant well, but sometimes I felt like she was constantly evaluating me and my teaching, because let's face it, 
I was new. I was learning. I was messing up a lot. So it was really tempting for me because I felt like I wasn't good enough yet to defer to her and to what she thought when I was trying to make decisions inside my classroom because let's face it, she had so much more experience than me. And although that can be really helpful in some ways, I mean, there were days when I was like, oh, thank goodness she's here to lend me some support and some perspective. It can also be super challenging because when you continually defer to someone else's experience and opinion, it can become harder and harder for you to then make decisions in your classroom that your TA may not agree with. And it can make it harder for you to experiment and to learn and to figure out your own teaching style and maybe how you want to do things your way in your classroom, which may be very different than her perspective and her experience. And once you do fall into that kind of a pattern with your TA, another thing that I experienced was it can be really hard to then change things that I wanted to do when she felt like she knew better and she had more experience. And she'd be like, oh, Lori, I don't know if you want to do that when I wanted to make a change to my centers or I wanted to try giving my students a little more autonomy and choice. And that led to a really uncomfortable working environment for everyone because it was clear she didn't agree with me and I'd given her a little bit too much power from the start. So from the start, it's best if you can sit down and on your own, really get clear about how you want to utilize the incredible gift of someone else's experience with that grade level and with children in general at your school before the school year even starts. So you can have that introductory meeting with your TA and lay out how you'd like to work together inside your classroom. Now, if you're listening to this podcast midway through the year, which is when I've published it, it isn't too late to have that meeting with your teacher assistant. I'm just trying to give you some perspective in terms of how you might want to start the year differently next year if you've fallen into that kind of a pattern. So if you can, even now, if it's the end of January or whenever you're listening to this, it isn't too late to have that meeting with your teacher assistant and just talk about changes you'd like to make and how you'd like to start working together moving forward. Now, it might feel a little uncomfortable or a lot uncomfortable, but if you've fallen into a negative pattern or if things are not going the way you'd like them to in your classroom with your TA, it isn't too late to make that change, but nothing is going to change unless you do, right? So you can approach that meeting with humility and with just speaking truth and acknowledging the elephant in the room. You're a new teacher. You've never done this before. You're learning how to work with the TA, and based on what you've learned so far, you would like to experiment with making some changes. That doesn't put the blame in anybody's court. It's acknowledging you're part of it, our part in it. We're new teachers. We're just trying to figure this out. And here are the changes I'd like to try based on my own growth and experience so far. So if you want things to change, just like when you're making a change with your classroom management, the most important first step is to get super clear about what exactly you want to change and what that's going to look like. So during today's episode, I'm going to share with you a bunch of ideas for how you can utilize the incredible gift of a teacher assistant inside your classroom that hopefully will serve as a springboard for you in getting clear about how you want to maybe make changes with your own TA or how you'd like to plan to work with a TA in your classroom when you finally have a classroom of your own. Also, if you're a student teacher right now, oh my gosh, you're so lucky that you're listening to this episode before you have your own classroom. I encourage you to really start paying attention to how your mentor teacher has incorporated the TA inside your classroom, how they're using parent volunteers, how they're utilizing other adults inside your classroom if you have volunteers of any kind, and start asking some questions about why they've made the decision to utilize their TA or their parent volunteers in the ways that they have. I'm also going to give you a lot of different ideas that may or may not be allowed in your school district. So for example, inside my Beginning Teacher Talk private Facebook group, some teachers have mentioned that they love to have their TAs grade assignments for them. So in my school district, that was actually illegal. 
my TA was not allowed to do any grading of student work whatsoever because it was against district policy and was a violation of student and family privacy policy. So just be sure to ask a lot of questions about what is allowed and what isn't allowed with the TA or the volunteers in your classroom so you can get clear about some some different ideas and ways that you might want to incorporate a TA into your own classroom that will be to in the best interests of not only you, but of all of your students. Now, before we dive in and talk about some very very practical strategies to help you start thinking about how you can utilize your TA. Can I ask you a big favor? If you've been loving the podcast and you've been finding this helpful and it's been valuable in your own teaching, please help me to spread the word. If you can think of another new teacher who could use the information that I'm sharing with you today, please just pause this episode and share the link with them. I'd be so incredibly grateful because as you know, one of the only ways I can continue to help support new teachers around the world is if you help me to spread the word. So I would be so grateful and I have a feeling that they will be as well because we could all use a little more love, a little more help and a little more support. So just please take a moment right now and send the link to one or two of your teacher besties. All right, so let's dive in and talk about how you can utilize your TA during regular class time. All right, so the first idea I have for you is small group instruction. This idea is so often overlooked, but one of the ways that I love to use my TA inside my classroom was when a specific group of students needed a little extra help and support or review on a topic or a concept that the rest of the class seemed to have already grasped. So sometimes I would ask my TA, to pull that small group and work on either completing the assignment that the rest of the class had already completed or have them do a little extra additional work with that small group to give them that little extra time and practice and support with that skill or concept. Remember, it doesn't always have to be you. You've already taught the concept and you can ask your TA to then do some review activities with that small group. It doesn't have to be you so that you can continue to teach the rest of the class. It keeps everybody moving forward. I want to snap my fingers right now, but it keeps everything at a really fast moving pace inside your classroom. And that way the kids who need the extra support get it while the rest of the class can continue to move on with content. Another way that you can use your TA is during center time. So if you've listened to my previous episode where I talked about how to set up learning centers inside my classroom, you'll know that one of the centers that I love to have, no matter which topic or subject my centers were in, was a creative or artistic center of some kind. I loved having kids do something creative to really help process whatever it was that they were learning. So whenever I had a center that required a little extra assistance, like maybe I wanted to use paint or or clay or plasticine at a center. And I wanted to ensure that it didn't get messy and maybe my students needed a little extra one-on-one support or supervision when they were doing that center because it was something a little different. That was usually the center where I would ask my TA to work for our center work that day. So as my students rotated through their centers, she would stay at that table with that center, giving extra supervision and assistance to each group that came through it. And if you need a little extra help setting up or getting started with learning centers inside your classroom, maybe you started them the beginning of the school year and they've been a hot mess all year, you might want to check out my learning center starter kit inside my TPG store. I created this because... It is really the culmination of like 10 years of learning about how to do centers in a streamlined and effective way and setting them up in a way that sets your students up for success. So all my troubleshooting, all of the things that I tried over the years that didn't work, you're going to see what I finally settled on for learning centers inside my classroom that worked really well for me if you want to check that out. So I'll link to that resource for you in the show notes for this episode, episode number 152, in case you want to incorporate that into your own classroom. But again, coming back to your TA, it's a really great way to incorporate his or her time. It's usually her, so I'm going to say her. Usually a great way to incorporate their time or use their time is by having them work at a center where you know your students are going to need a little extra support. Now, one of my other favorite ways to use my TA's talents and abilities was to ask her to give individual students extra reading time one-on-one with her. So if you've been listening to my podcast for a while now, you know that one of my favorite ways of involving parent volunteers in my classroom was to ask them to read one-on-one with children because 
Reading is foundational. If students are struggling in reading, they are going to struggle in all of the other subject areas as well, especially as they progress through the grade levels and they stop learning to read and they start reading for content. If they haven't grasped that by the end of second grade, they're going to just fall further and further behind. So one of my favorite ways to incorporate adults, including TAs in my classroom, was to have a first name checklist of all of my students and a pile of books available. And anytime they had an extra 10 or 15 15 minutes, I would ask them to pull one or two students and read with them. You would be amazed by how much extra one-on-one time children can get when you give your TA the autonomy and the freedom to be a partner with you in helping students to get as much support that they can get by having this ready and available at all times inside your classroom, especially if you choose books that are highly engaging for your students and you let students choose the book they're going to read with the TA. Again, let your students choose the reading material. Any extra reading time is going to be super valuable reading time for your students. Now, one of my other favorite ways to utilize my TA was to have them help kids catch up on unfinished work. Oh my gosh, such a lifesaver. So inside my classroom, we had something called a work in progress basket where children would put their work if it wasn't finished at the end of each class period. So every day after lunch or during silent reading time or whatever works with your schedule, you would ask your TA to grab your work in progress basket and call children to the back table one at a time or in small groups, depending on who needed to finish what, to complete their unfinished work. Such a lifesaver, so great for the kids because they have that focused time to get a little extra support if they need to, and they're separated from the rest of the class so they aren't distracted as, as much. Now, next, I loved to use my TA to help with special seasonal activities that required one-on-one assistance. Again, you can do so much more when you have another adult in the classroom, especially when they're used to working with your age level, right? So special projects during like Halloween, we used to create these incredible spider webs on black construction paper using glue and loose glitter, like white glue and loose glitter, (laughs) They were absolutely gorgeous. My students loved them, but the thought of having students do this without one-on-one assistance, especially when it involved like plates of loose glitter in my second grade classroom was horrifying, right? So anytime you can involve your TA or a parent volunteer, if you don't have a TA, in giving students one-on-one assistance, doing special projects like that can be a wonderful use of their time and talents. And by the way, speaking of special seasonal activities, If your 100th day of school is coming up and you'd like a little extra help planning for that, you might want to scoop up my 100th day of school plans inside my TPT store. So I always loved the 100th day of school. There are tons of super fun activities that you can do with your students that don't require a lot of prep so that that's coming up for you and you're looking for a little bit of help with that. Be sure to check those out inside my TPT store. But whatever special seasonal thing is coming up for you, if it's Halloween or if it's, I guess we're entering the second half of the year, maybe you want to have your TA help with writing valentines, if you're doing that in your classroom, whatever is coming up, a special spring project, that's a really great opportunity for your TA to work with your students one-on-one or in small groups. Now, next up, depending on your district's rules, of course, you might be able to ask your TA to do some individual testing with students. Oh my gosh. So I know that in my district, the one exception to not allowing TAs to grade was they did allow them to complete reading running records for our students at the beginning of the school year, which I'm telling you is a complete godsend. I was so grateful for that. So even if your TA is not allowed to grade student work, it's possible that they're allowed to give specific individual assessments. So just find out what's allowed at your school, or they may be allowed to oversee testing. So they might be allowed to just be the eyes in the room while you're at your desk grading papers. So if you give your students an an assignment or a test, are they allowed to be the ones circulating among the students and supervising them while you're grading papers still in the classroom? Another thing you might want to look into is whether or not your TA is allowed to be left alone in the room with your students. My guess is they probably are not allowed to be left in charge for liability reasons, but it could be different in every district, which is why we we can't pee all day long, right? We can't leave our classrooms. But just be sure to find out so you don't end up breaking some rules that you didn't even know that you were breaking. And finally, one of the other creative ways I love to use my TA was to ask her to read to the class or to play a review game while 
I did testing with individual children or small groups at the back of the classroom. So even if your TA is not allowed to do the testing herself, or if you don't want your TA doing the testing, maybe you want to ensure you do it yourself, you can have her do an activity or read a story to the rest of the class. If you're reading a novel, she could be reading a novel to the class while the the kids are doodling in their doodle books or with a group while you're testing with the rest of your students. So if you've been listening to my podcast again for a while now, you've heard me talk about my imagination station. Those are fantastic activities you can do with the entire class any month of the school year. And it would be a great activity for your TA to do with part of the class if you needed to do individual or small group testing with other students. So again, I'll link to those in the show notes for this episode, episode number 152, if you want to check them out. But there's a lot of creative ways that you can utilize your TA in your classroom when it comes to teaching and learning. Now, there are also a lot of other ways that you can ask for your TA's help during your preps or when your students are in specials, like in library or in gym. And one of the things I'd love to ask my TA to do for me was to ask for their help in changing out my student work display inside my classroom. So we had something called a Bravo board or a Dream It, Achieve It bulletin board where each student had a space for featured work and it could be different for every student. But templates for these bulletin boards are included in my Ready for School Academy for all my students in different themes. But one thing I would often ask my TA to do was to swap out some of my students' work while they were at the library or at gym or whatever they were going to. So new work was displayed all the time and they loved seeing different things show up that was getting featured. It was really fun. Also, if you do morning work inside your classroom each day as part of your morning routine, which I really hope you do, you can ask your TA to check for completion of morning work so they can then pull the kids when they come back from library library or gym to complete their work. Just quick little checks, little things that you can do to ask them to help you to keep running your classroom quickly. You can have them check and submit hot lunch orders or scholastic book orders. They take so much time and your TA can help you to get those ready. You can ask them with help calling parents to confirm or as a reminder that they volunteered to come on the field trip or that they're volunteering on Wednesday. So those phone calls to parents could take you a lot of time, but it would be really great to have your TA do that for you to confirm their participation. Maybe they're providing a snack for a class party or if you do special Friday days like I did in my classroom. They're so much fun. (laughs) Confirming that they'll be attending an upcoming special Friday and answering any questions they might have is also a great use of your TA's time. And just quickly, a special Friday is just a way that we featured every student throughout the year on a Friday. And I teach all my academy members how I did that. It's so much fun. Also, if you do memory books inside your classroom or you have assessment portfolios, a way of tracking all of your students' work throughout the year, they're such valuable systems to have set up so you can continually add to them throughout the entire year and not only track your students' growth and progress, but capture all those amazing memories. Your TA can be a super helpful partner for you in keeping both of those ongoing projects updated. Now, just a word of caution, I would encourage you not to have your TA do all your photocopying on a regular basis and things like that, because again, that could be a violation of school and district policy. In my school district, my TA was there to mostly support students and to be an assistant to you in teaching and learning, in supporting students. My TA was not allowed to do a lot of photocopying or grading or cutting and laminating or things like that. Now, of course, she would do a little bit of that every now and then for me, but I had to be very careful about not making that a big part of her daily responsibilities. My principal actually pulled all of us aside and said, listen, your job as teacher is to do all of your photocopying and your lesson preparation and your assessment and grading. Your TA's job is to support you in doing that. So it just might be different in every district. So just be careful and ask a lot of questions so you know what's okay for you and what isn't. I hope this was helpful for you and that this time together has helped you as you plan for or continue to learn how to work with your TA inside your classroom. And I'd love to know what you think about this podcast episode. It would mean so much to me if you would take a screenshot and tag me on IG at Beginning Teacher Talk because I'd love to know what part of this episode has been most helpful for you in terms of thinking about and preparing to work with a TA inside your classroom. 
Finally, please subscribe and leave a five-star review. This helps me to spread the word. Join me on Instagram at Beginning Teacher Talk and join our Beginning Teacher Talk private Facebook group where you'll be part of an incredible community of new teachers all dedicated to supporting each other. I'll be here with you again next week, same time, same place as always. And remember, just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there's no need for you to struggle like one. Bye for now. Thank you.